Thanks so much for joining us. We are surrounded by Brad and Artesian Baker, Tim Topi. Thank you so much for being here from Wave Hill Bread. Thanks for having me. I nice. want to talk all about your company. You and your wife bought a bakery. You're located right now in Norwalk. Tell me about right. buying it. So when I, when I moved in the States, uh, 2013, I was looking for, uh, after working for 15 years in Italy, uh, I was looking for a job, as I still continue baking. Then uh, we found the Wayfield Breads that was, uh, it started for, with Mitchell Market, the previous owners, and uh, all the bakers that I started was the best bread that I ever had in the U.S. and said, that's a baker that I'm going to take a job and work for it. Then after that, they, they planned to retire, and they sold the baker to me, and we're still... So since 2015, you've been baking bread? Yes, correct. All right, so you were, you were born in Albania. Correct. You studied where? In Rome, in Italy. In Rome. Yes. What did you learn in Rome? In Rome, I did learn a lot of the breads that I'm kind of making here, and uh, the, uh, the pizza. The idea was like moving over to pizzeria, but then for 15 years I've been doing the bread, so I love more bread, and I see like everyone loves good bread, but they, it's hard to find a good bread. It's hard to find. And it's hard to make it, but with some passion and hard work, we, we, we are doing it. As a little boy, what made you become a baker? Were you surrounded by bakers? I was not, actually. My mother, now that I tell her that I own a bakery in America, this and that, she tells me, I remember you always used to like uh, make things with flour and uh, stuff. I did not remember that. But she will, uh, when I was like five, six years old, I always loved baking, being around the kitchen. And uh, actually in Italy, I started as a job, but I was working for very nice people, and they always give me a raise because they thought I was passionate, hard you worker. Because you were good at it, right? Yes, and then I had to move. They were very sad that I left. Did you place. go to France after I Italy? I did not go to France. The bakery was like a based uh, for, uh, French techniques. I see. Then I did combine the very like French and Italian techniques, like the French breads has heavy, uh, like nice crust. And Italians are more lighter, so now we combine them both, like keeping the crust and make them nice and light. When inside. you walked in here, you were almost attacked because all of this is just so beautiful. Um, do you have a favorite bread, or do, are they all your favorites? Oh, it's like asking a parent, which one is your favorite kid? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I love them. I love them all, but the most special bread that I I have it's the focaccia, this which is focaccia. I bought that originally from Italy. And I, I love making this bread every day, and I've been doing this for like 18 years every day. How many like, loaves of bread are you able to make in Norwalk? In Norwalk, on a, Saturday, on a Friday, which is the biggest, biggest night of the week, uh, we, are, we do around like three to 4,000 loaves. Three to 4,000 yes, loaves. Because we have like 16 markets on a Saturday. Right, you mostly do farmer's markets, and you're also in stores Wholesale. around the state, and in Correct. New York as well. Correct. All right, let's look at the grains. So you're known for your grains. Um, you mill your own grains? Is yes, we do. So like how the grains are, before they are grinded, those are different uh, colors. Uh, that's spelled berries, which is one of my favorite grains, and uh, in all the breads that I use these grains, Customers find it more like uh, help them with the digestive uh -huh. process and gluten sensitive. That's one of the best ones. Those are the wheat berries. Those are the rye berries. And after we grind them, that's how they how they look. We do mix them with the non-GMO King Arthur flour, and that's how we create the recipe. In every bread, they have different different grains. And uh, they're all grinded different because they're like some of them are softer, some of them are more like harder to grind them, and some of them that they get uh, boiled in water. So, so just to help the bread to preserve. What time do you get up in the morning to start baking? Tell me what time I go to sleep. <laughs> you never sleep, <laughs> yeah. right? Bakers never sleep. Yes, bakers never sleep. All right, let's go. Long shifts. L very long, long shifts. Let's go through the breads. What, what are these breads? And these are still hot. I wish you could feel that. Right. What are the? What so are the this one is the buttermilk, okay. which we do use uh, very very little water, and the rest it's uh, all like the liquid buttermilk, which is pure uh, has a 
real uh, flavor and taste uh -huh. of the buttermilk and light of honey, no sugar. I'm not a big fan of of sugar. Of sugar. Did you learn that, that in Italy make. or not so much? I, d I did, and the place that I worked, uh, the bakery was all uh, like not sugar, just pure bread. That's uh -huh. what I Oh, and love it. How so we do make a couple sweets, uh, which is monkey breads and uh, so monkey and breads. All, all right, let me let me just show you this. Yeah. So these pull apart, right? Yes. What's in this? That's a crusando. Uh, how we actually started that uh, the head baker Avery. We had a lot left over of uh, of the crusando when you cut the corners, and the head baker said, "Oh, let's uh, let's turn those to monkey breads." And we start making monkey breads. We start like four. Each the first day, now we're making over a thousand of them. Of course, you are, in yes. A year or something. Now, this is the focaccia. That's the focaccia. This one, it's very, very special because the hydration is very high and it's right. very hard to work with it. it takes but you're very, a master at it, so yes. you can do it. These are um, dinner rolls. Those are the brioche rolls. Uh -huh. Those are uh, have what they have special has that we use the fresh eggs. And we use a European butter, 82, 83% fat. It means that it's much better butter than low fat. It sounds butter, really yes. good. <laughs> and the organic sesame seeds, you can see them on top. They are not super light, they are darker. Uh -huh. Because the lighter ones are bleached and those are organic, non bleached. This bread? That's the French batard. That's the original three grain that the uh, bakery was started, the previous owners did for many years. And it's still the highest production of the bakery. And this one is huge. This, this one is an amazing. Take, take a look at this. Yeah. This one is like over like is five pounds, out. five pounds loaf of bread. We sell it big quarters. We sell a lot of the markets. It's a special bread because we do ferment this over like a 24, uh, 24 hours fermentation. And it has a lot of organic spelled berries, which they are very special, expensive, but also very, very special. And then you also and do rolls. Uh, we do also the croissants. We have almond croissants with almond paste inside layers. and almond in sliced, which we can cut them and see the layers, how the good croissants are. All right, yeah, let's, let's cut that because yes. I want to see what that looks like. Let's go on this one here. Yeah. This is really hard for me not to just yeah. dive into all of this and eat Thank it right you. now. Yeah. So. So what we want to see on the like a good croissant or a good bread, we want to see all these big bubbles of air inconsistent. Yeah, can you see that? So, yeah. Are you ever not happy with what you make? Are very you rare. Very, very rare. I love that. See, yes. that's a sign of a master. Yeah. Um, and do you teach what I, you have learned in Norwalk? If, I, if I, I wanted to take a class from you, could we I? We do. We do make during uh, do during the winter. We have January, February are our slow, slowest months of the season, and we do like teach sourdough, we make the focaccia, the five, uh, five foot focaccia, like we make this in a pizza style, and we do teach the sourdough. It's fun because you see your customers, all, all, the whole year they support you, and you get to talk to them and show how you make their, their bread that they, they, they buy the whole year. And then we get to prove how, how bad of a baker that yes. we are. No. When we I find a lot of good bakers. Really? Big bread home, yes. How many people do you employ? We have uh, around like nine bakers. We have uh, during the summer we have a lot of marketeers that support and help with the uh, farmers markets. We probably around like in a slow season around 20, and the uh, with the farmers markets around like 30. Some. Do you need to expand at all, or are you as big as you're going to get? But expansion, it's. Uh, being like a business owner and a baker, it's very hard to expand because you want to keep the quality. Sure. Like when I talk about, when I look at the business, I always think about the product, and it's I don't want to like mass produce something. It. Yeah, mass produce it because that's will be, and if you take me off the production, which if I have to run different trucks, will be a little bit hard. Even take I have like amazing help. On take the me through your day. How does it start, and what do you do? So we have a 24 hours like running because our doughs, they all ferment everything. It's over like 24 hours fermented. Like the three grain is made with a 24 hours polish. It's like a liquid start, uh, like very hydrated, like starter that help on the fermentation and preserve the bread. And uh, we mix the doughs, we keep the doughs sit for too long. 
in the place before we bake them. So we start in the morning, we have a baker starting at 7, and the last baker will finish like 3, 4, 5 in the morning. So it's always in continuing baker. And it's also a store there, right? You can, you can buy. It's, uh, we don't offer coffee. We have just like offer the breads for sale. And uh, we, got, we get a good traffic. Tim, if you, were, weekends. if you were not a baker, what would you be? I don't know. You're I, just a baker. I don't right? see myself doing something else now. Is, <laughs> there, is there any type of breads that you are not making or anything you want to make that you haven't yet? So with the, the only thing it has been uh, is the gluten-free, the customers. Gluten-free, uh, right. But we need a different facility for that. Um, but I'm trying to make uh, like everyone, uh, like for every culture, every country make like something. Like the meat is like more French, the batard it's like more like Italian French, and the pumpernickel it's more like for different. Uh, so I try to make of everything very international. Did you ever, uh, did you ever check out Swedish breads? Uh, I'm, I'm Scandinavian, that's why I ask. I do. I do have my landlords. They always you ask do? me to make the Scandinavian bread. Yeah, yeah. but I, one day I will make it. Yes. And I'll be there. Um, I just I want to thank you for bringing your breads and um, I Thanks hope you get even me. more customers out of this because I, I appreciate that you are um, a family-owned business and you came to this country with all your expertise and we get to have your breads. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Spend all night kissing and a bottle's right here, then the world's missing. Got a little sidetracked to find my solution. I found the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep going to the grocery store, but mine, just the same time. I skip right ahead to the last ride.